But what is the craziest thing that a boy has ever done to get your attention? Nobody does anything crazy to get my attention. Come on, Taylor. <laughs> really? Um, Boys, take note. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I've had some really nice fans do nice things. Yeah, what has been the like, most extreme thing? Make fans songs, do? make videos, make which I which is really nice. It like it's really sweet. Um, but like, I don't know. As far as guys, there's I don't there's they don't work remember. hard enough, do they? Like they really don't. I I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. So I guess you know, <laughs> I guess there hasn't been anything kind of made which too is much good. Fun. So it's like easier. The bar's set really low for anyone who I date in the future to come in and be like a great guy. I'll be like, how oh, you exist? This is crazy. <laughs> Do you get frustrated with that kind of stuff, or are you just kind of used to it? It's just like, oh, well, that was going to happen. Because right. if, if I'm in a picture with a with a guy, that's probably going to be what people are s assuming. That such is life. Yeah. Um, it's it kind of comes with it. So I I've stopped the whole like. Man, people are saying things that aren't true again. It's just kind of like, oh, people are saying things that aren't true again. Right. It's a Wednesday. <laughs> We've seen you write in the past about relationships. Is there some people that need to be running for cover when the next <laughs> album comes out? Uh, um, I'll let you figure it out when it comes out, for sure. Because, I mean, like, I, I just, I write about my life. And, and there are people that come into my life and exit my life. And all that ends up being what comes out in you know, my songs, and uh, I'm really excited about the next record. I'm so excited about it. I've been writing it since before the last record came out, so really? there's been so much that has been amazing to write about, and, you know, right now I'm just having to pick from, like, the 30 songs that I have that I love and pick the best ones. I feel very jealous of you, though, because this is going to be the best form of revenge, like, just write hit songs about it. It's not, it's not, a, yeah, it's not bad, um, you know, but there's the pressure of like, it's, it, it has to be good, you know, and, and if it's not, then, then your ex kind of is like, Haha, it's not good. So, you know, there's the pressure of like, you have to make a great record. And for me, I'm just, I'm obsessed with it when I'm making an album because I just want it to be better than all the ones I've made before. And I kind of compete with myself. It's, mm -hmm. I just drive myself insane with it. Now, I know uh, that you'll never name names, but will the guy that it did this to, is he going to know who it, that it's, it's him? Yeah, of course. Is there specifics in there? Um, <laughs> you know, that's kind of how I write songs. Mm -hmm. I, I think that if you're just going to write a song about like a relationship that has no personal characteristics to it, mm -hmm. how can people relate to that? Because there is no, there is no standard relationship. There is only a personalized relationship that you shared with another person. Um, writing about that means that other people who have that kind of relationship with another person or had one can relate to it. Totally. I've, I used to think that if you leave out details that people could relate more. But I, I don't think that's the case because I think that it's really the more you let people in, the more they feel let in and the more they feel like we all share something. Would you say that you fall in love easily or out of love easily? Yeah, both. Both? Um, yeah, I'm really young, so that's kind of a trademark characteristic of my age group. <laughs> You're very right and very smart, because unfortunately, as you get older, it's so much harder to fall in love. It really is. Really? Yeah. Or just, like, meet good people. I think you get pickier. I think that's the problem. You're just yeah. Like, eh. It's growing up. <laughs> it's totally I don't know is. anything about, <laughs> about any of it, you know? It's like, I think the more that I think I know, then something comes along to just, like, kind of show me that love is one of, love is the great unknown. Mm -hmm. It's like, and that's why I write songs about it. Would you say that you're a hopeless romantic? I'd say that, I say that I am sort of a hopeless romantic, you know? It's like, I don't know, it's like I don't know what I want the end result to be. I don't know when I want to end up, like, settling down or something like that. I don't know any of those things, but I do know that, like, the idea of romance is kind of what what makes me get out of bed in the morning. Aww. When do you find your inspiration? Like, when is it? Is it when you're, like, going to sleep at night? Is it a certain time, or do you just do it all at once? You get in the studio and get it done? I write songs at any hour of the day. Sometimes you just have an accident happen, like, where you write a song and it just pops into your mind during a co-writing session. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with my single, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together. Really? It just happened. Well, speaking of that one, it's broken all kind of records, so congratulations. It's Thanks. amazing. <laughs> and it's kind of become this new, like, breakup anthem for all these young girls everywhere. Why do you think people <laughs> have responded so much to that I think it's a really, really bold thing to say over and over again in a chorus, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and it also kind of makes a breakup and sound like a party. <laughs> um, you know, there are so many different ways a breakup can sound, but one of the ways is like, 
Yes! Celebration! We're done! <laughs> What's the hardest thing about being Taylor Swift? The hardest thing is that, like, you know, you can't make a mistake or do one thing without it getting turned into a million other things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 22, so that's kind of the age that most people are finding themselves and figuring things out and learning lessons the hard way. Mm -hmm. But I can't really learn lessons the hard way because if I make a mistake, it's like, news cycle for the next six months, <laughs> Taylor made a mistake. So I guess I kind of live in fear of that. Fair and that's like, you know, you kind of live judged by like a court of public opinion, which is kind of a tough thing about it. But the perks outweigh the bad things. Yeah. So what would you say is the best thing? The best thing is, um, is knowing that when I put out a song, people are going to hear it. I used to get really scared when I'd write a song when I was like 12 and 13. Like, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of this and I'm afraid no one will ever hear it. So now, knowing that if I write a song, I know that someday people will hear it. You have got to be the busiest girl. Like, I turn on the TV and there's a special on you, you're just like all over the place. Do you get any downtime? Um, yeah, I do actually, every once in a while, you know, because we've been doing this for a while, so my team has learned not to burn me out. Okay. They're like, she needs a personal life, she needs like friends, she needs like <laughs> a day off here and there. So it's been fine. I mean, talk to me in a year when I've been on tour forever and I'm just like, I'm so tired. What that voice was, I don't know. But I don't know if that'll be my voice in a year. I'll just be talking like that. Sound like a man. Yeah, that'll be great. I think, I mean, the highlight for me, I didn't expect to win Artist of the Year. Really? I, no, yeah, no, not at all. I love that you are, are always genuinely shocked. Like, it's my favorite thing when I see you and I'm like, seriously, she doesn't, you never know. You're so humble. Thank you for saying that. I just think that, you know, if you're actually living in the moment and you're actually experiencing things as they happen to you, you have to have the awareness that this could be the last time you ever get to make a speech or thank your family or win an award. And it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an amazing opportunity, you know, to be nominated, to get to win eight Billboard Awards in one night. It's just like... You know, I think that if you don't feel that, then what, you know, what are you it's doing? It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. A lot of awards for you this year. It's been really good. Things have been great. I'm kind of like, I just, every day I just think about it. I try to take a minute to think about it every day, how great it's been. And, you know, on, on the days where I'm kind of stressed out or exhausted or something, I just look back and I'm like, this has been great. It's been amazing. It's been, it's been, is it ever overwhelming or you ever just sit back and say, oh my goodness? Sometimes it's overwhelming, you know, like if, if, if you're really being human about it, anything gets overwhelming. Um, you know, and I think that sometimes, I, I wasn't one of those people who really expected all of this to happen at this level, so for it to have gotten to this place and really legitimately go everywhere and everybody's like, oh hey Taylor, I'm like, how did you, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some day, you know, some days it's a little bit, um, it's it's a little strange, but it, it's something I've wanted since I was a little kid, so it's awesome. A new album? What can we what, what can we expect? Oh, oh, that's not going to be for a while because we're really? still on this one. This one only came out like seven, eight months ago. No, no, yeah. But I'm still I'm thinking I'm thinking about it, but I'm not obsessing yet. When if you talk to me when I'm obsessing over it, like a few months from now, it'll be like I won't even be able to focus on a conversation. Really? So I'll be like thinking of ideas. I love your song. She you listen to it? Yeah, and the video's awesome. Oh my god, it's thank so you. cool. But you were dancing all funky and well, kind of. Well, it's like that's kind of a, that's kind of a metaphor for like living like you don't care what people think. Yeah. If you're willing to dance because I you should. love it and because you're having fun, right. Not because you look cool. Right. That's a whole different thing. That means you're like playing by your own rules. I love you. So you I was hoping that was what came across. Yes. Yeah. What is next uh <laughs> who knows i have no idea if you would have told me two years ago you're going to move to new york cut your hair short make a pop album be very unapologetic about it <laughs> i don't think i would have seen any of it coming so life is really unpredictable lately and i'm thrilled by that not That's scared awesome. of it and you have managed to shake it all off and speaking of shake it off what's the message behind that song for you for me the song was about um kind of the shift in the way that I handle humiliation or criticism or people picking on me or uh, taking shots at me. And I live my life with a lot more humor mm -hmm. and, uh, and I take things a little less seriously now, which is all exhibited in that song. And you've done this many times now. Do you, do you ever get nervous anymore? Yes. You do? Okay. I mean, I get nervous about like daily life mundane things. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, me being nervous is just sort of something I'm used to by now. But I'm, I get nervous really easily, but I also get excited and enthusiastic really easily too. Yeah. So like, before I got to the, the carpet, 
I found out that like a bunch of my friends have won their first Grammy, like at the pre-telecast, and I, I was like it. fully crying. Yeah. Like Max Martin, my producer, won Producer of the Year. Haley Williams from Paramore won Best Rock Song. Right. Um, Beyonce and Jay Z won already. It's just already such a good night. Your, your four nominations tonight, including Best Fan Army, which you love your fans, and Best Lyrics, and the lyrics are so important to you in your music. They're, they're everything. Yeah, they're the most important part. And so um, I'm nominated, I think, for Blank Space for the lyrics, which that would be really exciting because I was very proud of those lyrics. Like certain lines like, darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream. I was like, when I wrote those, I was stoked. So if, if, if that were to happen, if I were to pick one, it would probably be that one. It's impossible to know what the next album's gonna be because I've been just starting to think about it. And, and I know, the, the only thing I know is that it cannot sound like 1989 mm -hmm. because that album, I'm so proud of it and it's been such a huge moment in my career. And I think it would be doing that moment and that album a disservice to copy it. It just has to surprise people. I'm not sure what it's gonna be though. Because there are a lot of there are a lot of parts of of my songwriting that I feel like have I haven't even explored yet. So it's it's exciting. I love that I've gotten to have a ten year career so far, and I'm still 25 and still have a lot of time to figure everything out and go different directions. It's really fun. You are so grounded and so massively famous. Thanks. Whoa. <laughs> but it's the truth. What is it that keeps you so grounded? Um, I watch other people and their storylines and their life and how, you know, I would watch like behind the music when I was growing up, like, and I would really notice that the first thing, the first step of someone's decline in life and in their career was when they lost perspective. Yeah. And they started seeing themselves as being smarter than everyone else or cooler than everyone else or bigger or better. Um, and I, I always saw that as being the, the greatest misstep someone can have in their career. So I just, focus really hard on just constantly reminding myself of what is important, what is actually difficult. My job's not that difficult. I think we get really swept up in thinking that because we have a lot of pressure on us, our job is hard. Mm -hmm. Or that in some way, like, <clears throat> it's not the greatest thing that could ever happen to you getting to do this job, because it is. And your music is timeless. The love for the album Lover has gotten great reaction. How does it feel to hear your fans appreciate your music like they do? Thank you. That, it means the world. It really does. Um, that's all I want is for them to like it and for, the, for them to feel like it applies to their life or is a song they want to listen to on the way to work or like school or, or whatever they're going through. It's, it's the coolest thing that they have connected with this piece of work because I worked really hard on it. I had a lot of fun doing it, which I think you have to try to do both. <laughs> and you love cats. Was love this cats. the role you were meant to play? Yep. It was, it's all led to this. <laughs> it's really, you know, I have three cats now, which is technically just a herd. Oh. You know what I mean? When it's three, it's, it's, they've outnumbered you by a drastic amount. Um, I love cats. I always have since I was a kid. Yeah. It's not really a choice I made. It chose me, yeah. the cat life. <laughs> The cat, you about that cat life. Yeah, it chose me, and, and I have no choice but to just really lean into it, and so that's what I'm doing. So there's a third. I know Olivia and Meredith. Who's the third? I'm honored. That is so nice of you. <laughs> um, the third one is Benjamin, Benjamin Button. Oh, nice. So how, how would the cats feel about Mommy's performance in this? Oh, you know what? They, I think true to form, they would be ambivalent to of course. me as they are in every situation. Yeah. They don't care at all. Yeah. Um, which is what I respect. <laughs> I cannot wait to celebrate with my cat over the holidays. You can adopt a cat? Yes, I cannot wait. Do I you know what cat? I want a Bengal. Whoa. I know, I know. I, I've seen you with your backpack with They're your cats great. in it. I ha so yeah, I've had a Bengal. They'll climb everything. Climb the oh curtains. Goodness. They're really a athletic. Be, be, be prepared. <laughs> if you want an athletic cat, That's a yeah, if you want some fluffy cats, you come pet mine because okay, they well. don't do very much, but they're <laughs> they're virtual. very very lazy. loving. <laughs> That's one of the interesting questions that people ask me all the time about songs, and what I think is important to note is that these songs were mine years ago when they were written. Now they're ours. Now they're shared. 
they're caroling that song out there. I think every person out there might have someone they think of when they hear the song, and that's what I want. Billy Joel said you're the Beatles of your generation, that you know music. What does that mean to you? That honestly, like, broke my brain, because that doesn't seem like a real thing that, that would happen in life. I don't think, I think I, I might have hallucinated it. Maybe we had the same hallucination about that, because I don't really know how to process words like that from someone like him. He, I'm a huge fan of his. That's a that's a that's an icon saying that. Yes. I don't I don't know if that really happened. I need to see a video or something to prove it. For sure. For Cause sure. whoa. <laughs>